Welcome, everyone. Before we dive into today's critical topic, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to tap the bell icon. Think of it as your digital seatbelt, ensuring you're always protected and informed about the latest threats and vulnerabilities in the digital world. We're here to empower you with knowledge so you can navigate the complexities of cybersecurity with confidence. Tonight, we're not talking about the usual, easily visible threats that dominate the headlines. We're not discussing viruses or easily detectable malware. We're talking about something far scarier, something much more insidious, an invisible flaw, a silent vulnerability that's been lurking undetected in the very core of your phone's communication systems for decades, silently jeopardizing your privacy and security. It's called SS7. SS7 isn't a boy band sensation, a catchy tune, or the plot of a thrilling spy movie you might have seen. It's the fundamental protocol that governs how your private texts, your phone calls, and even your precise GPS location are transmitted across the globe. It's also the reason all of that sensitive information can be silently intercepted and stolen by someone, potentially located anywhere in the world, without you ever knowing it. Imagine a skeleton key, a master key that possesses the power to unlock nearly every mobile phone on the planet, a key that bypasses all your security measures. And the truly terrifying part is, you'd likely never even realize it was used, leaving you completely vulnerable. This isn't some far-fetched science fiction plot from a dystopian novel. It's a very real vulnerability, a critical flaw affecting billions of mobile phone users worldwide, and that very likely includes you. Picture your entire digital life, everything you hold dear on your phone. Your sensitive bank alerts, your most private conversations, even those crucial two-factor authentication codes. Imagine all of that being broadcast in a crowded public space, but you're the only one who's completely unable to hear it, completely oblivious to the ongoing breach. That's precisely what an SS7 attack feels like. A state of total ignorance and unawareness while your valuable data is silently and steadily siphoned away right under your nose. Attackers exploiting this vulnerability don't need sophisticated malware or deceptive phishing tactics. All they need is access to the telecommunications network which alarmingly is far easier to obtain than you might think. The sheer scale of this issue is truly staggering. It's a global flaw, deeply embedded and baked right into the very infrastructure that connects us all worldwide. We've invested in building incredibly high-tech, cutting-edge smartphones packed with advanced features, but we've done so on a shaky foundation of outdated and fundamentally insecure technology. This isn't about spreading paranoia or fear. It's simply about being informed, being aware of the risks that are out there. In a world where our smartphones have become indispensable extensions of ourselves, holding our most personal and sensitive information, understanding these kinds of threats is absolutely essential for protecting ourselves and our digital lives. So buckle up and prepare yourselves. We're about to pull back the curtain and expose the single biggest mobile security flaw that you've likely never even heard of. A flaw that could be putting your privacy and security at serious risk. So what is SS7? It's the protocol that lets phone companies talk to each other, handling calls, texts, billing, and roaming. Designed in the 1970s, SS7 was built for a world where only a few trusted telecom giants existed. Security wasn't a concern. Everyone with access was assumed trustworthy. There was no authentication, verification, or encryption, just blind trust. If a message arrived asking for your location or to forward your calls, the system complied, no questions asked. This golden retriever approach to security is the gaping wound in modern mobile communications. Our phones have evolved, but the network they rely on is still stuck in the past. It's like driving a Tesla on roads made of dirt and gravel. The infrastructure is dangerously outdated and attackers have learned to exploit it. That's the heart of the SS7 problem, a modern world built on ancient, naive trust. And that's exactly what makes it so dangerous. How did this exclusive club become a global security nightmare? Deregulation and the internet. As telecoms opened up in the 80s and 90s, thousands of new players gained SS7 access. The walled garden became a chaotic public market, shattering the original trust model. Now even small operators in loosely regulated countries can access powerful SS7 commands. Once you're on the network, you have the keys to the kingdom. No firewalls, no checks. The internet made things worse. You can now lease SS7 access online. For a few thousand dollars, anyone, from governments to criminals, can launch attacks. 
An archaic protocol built on trust now operates in a global, untrustworthy environment. Anyone with cash and know-how can hijack your calls, texts, or location. The back door is wide open and the keys are for sale. If SS7 is so broken, why are we still using it? Because it's the plumbing of global telecom, impossible to replace overnight. Newer networks like 4G and 5G still need to connect to SS7 for compatibility with billions of older devices. As long as that gateway exists, the vulnerabilities remain. Even 5G isn't a cure-all. Most deployments still rely on older systems that interface with SS7. And the newer diameter protocol has its own flaws. The telecom industry is massive and slow to change, so patchwork fixes like firewalls are the norm. But attackers constantly find ways around these defenses. We're stuck in a global game of cat and mouse with the odds stacked against us. The foundation is crumbling, but the world keeps building on top of it. Until the core is replaced, the risk remains. This isn't just theoretical mumbo-jumbo or some abstract concept discussed in cybersecurity circles. We're not talking about hypothetical scenarios that might happen someday. SS7 attacks have very real, devastating consequences for individuals and organizations alike. These are not victimless crimes. They impact people's lives in profound ways. Back in 2017, cybercriminals operating in Germany exploited vulnerabilities in the SS7 network to bypass SMS-based two-factor authentication protocols. This is a critical flaw as many rely on SMS for added security. They didn't just access accounts, they completely drained bank accounts, leaving victims financially devastated. The attackers initiated their scheme by using phishing tactics to steal login credentials from unsuspecting users. Once they had those credentials, they leveraged SS7 to silently redirect victims' text messages to their own controlled devices. The truly insidious part? Victims remained completely unaware. Their phones appeared to be working perfectly normally, but behind the scenes, their verification codes were being intercepted, and their hard-earned money was being stolen right out from under them. And it's not just ordinary citizens who are at risk. Journalists who often handle sensitive information and political dissidents who may be targeted by oppressive regimes have also found themselves in the crosshairs of SS7 attacks. As an example, in 2016, security researchers demonstrated the power of SS7 by tracking the location of a U.S. congressman's phone and even going so far as to record his private phone calls. All of this was accomplished using only his publicly available phone number. There was no need to install any malicious software and they didn't require any physical access to the device. The only tool they needed was access to the SS7 network. The implications of this are absolutely huge and frankly, quite terrifying. It means that any system that relies on SMS messages for identity verification is fundamentally at risk of being compromised. The German bank heist should have served as a major wake-up call, but it seems the lessons haven't been fully learned. Since then, we've seen similar attacks cropping up in various corners of the globe, demonstrating the widespread nature of this threat. The reality is that our trust in mobile phone numbers as a secure form of identification is fundamentally broken and can no longer be relied upon. In essence, SS7 vulnerabilities turn your mobile phone into an open book, readily accessible to anyone who manages to gain access to the SS7 network. This is a real, active, and largely invisible threat that looms over all of us. The convenience of mobile technology has, unfortunately, come at a significant cost to our personal and financial security. And the truly frightening part is that the vast majority of people remain completely unaware of the dangers lurking beneath the surface. We're constantly told to use two-factor authentication as a crucial layer of security. It's that extra step designed to keep the bad guys out, even if they manage to snag your password. But here's the catch. Not all 2FA is created equal. There's a hierarchy of security, and some methods offer significantly more protection than others. SMS-based 2FA, where you receive a code via text message, is the most common form of two-factor authentication. It's widely used because it's convenient and easy to implement. However, that convenience comes at a cost because it's also the most vulnerable. It's a security measure that's increasingly seen as inadequate in the face of evolving threats. SS7, a signaling protocol used by mobile networks, has a known vulnerability that allows attackers to intercept your texted codes. This is a significant security flaw that can be exploited. And the scary part is, they can do it without ever physically touching your phone. The attack happens remotely behind the scenes, making it difficult to detect. 
If someone manages to get their hands on your phone number, which isn't always difficult, they can potentially intercept those two FA codes while they're in transit, effectively stealing your second factor of authentication. This completely defeats the whole point of something you have because someone else can easily gain access to it. It renders the two FA protection useless. So what's the solution to this problem? How do you protect yourself from this vulnerability? The answer lies in using an authenticator app, such as Google Authenticator or Authy, which is another popular and reliable option. These apps generate the authentication codes directly on your device within the app itself. This means there's no network transmission involved and therefore nothing for an attacker to intercept. Switching over to an authenticator app for your two-factor authentication is one of the single best things you can do to significantly enhance the security of your online accounts. So, Take a moment to go to your account security settings for each of your important online accounts and swap out that SMS-based 2FA for a more secure app-based option. The entire process only takes a few minutes to complete for each account, and it instantly moves your security posture from something shaky and unreliable to a solid, rock-solid foundation. Continuing to use SMS for 2FA in 2025 with all the known vulnerabilities is essentially like wearing a thin t-shirt and expecting it to function as a bulletproof vest. It might give you a false sense of security and make you feel a little bit better, but it absolutely will not stop a determined attacker who knows what they're doing. So please make the switch to a more secure method today. Your digital life and the security of your personal information truly depends on it. Beyond ditching SMS to FA, here's how to harden your mobile security. First, practice good digital hygiene. Be suspicious of unsolicited emails, texts, and calls. Phishing is often the first step in an attack. Never share personal info or credentials unless you're absolutely sure who you're dealing with. Use a VPN on your mobile devices, especially on public Wi-Fi. It won't stop SS7 attacks, but it encrypts your data from local snoops. Regularly review app permissions. Only grant what's necessary. Every extra permission is a potential risk. Keep your phone and apps updated. Updates often patch critical security flaws. Outdated software is an open invitation to attackers. Limit your attack surface, fewer permissions, fewer risks. Stay alert, stay updated, and treat your phone like the digital vault it is. These steps won't make you invincible, but they'll make you a much harder target. Security is about layers. Build as many as you can. Start today. The scariest part of an SS7 attack? You'll never see it coming. There's no warning, no pop-up, no strange behavior. Your phone works as usual. Meanwhile, someone could be reading your texts or listening to your calls. Most people have never heard of SS7 and trust their carrier to keep them safe, but the network itself is the weak link. Awareness is our only real defense. The telecom industry has been slow to fix the problem, and attackers can exploit weak links anywhere in the world. Until there's a global solution, we have to protect ourselves, educate your friends and family, explain why SMS 2FA is risky and how to use authenticator apps. The more people know, the more pressure there is for change. Security starts with awareness and action. Don't wait for the industry. Start protecting yourself now. SS7 is an ancient insecure protocol that still underpins our mobile world. It turns our phones into open books for anyone with the right access. The problem is rooted in outdated trust, and fixing it is a massive challenge. Real-world attacks prove the threat is active and ongoing. That means your security is your responsibility. Be vigilant, question defaults, and use stronger security measures. Move away from SMS to FA, use authenticator apps, VPNs, and keep your software updated. It's not fair, but it's reality. By understanding the threat and acting, you can protect your digital life. Stay safe, and thanks for watching.